Let's argue. Hello and welcome to Extreme Gameplay, where I play games slashly. Today I'm coming in with another Let's Argue video where I go through the God of War community hot takes and express my opinion on them. Make sure to leave your opinion about the takes today and make sure to leave your hot takes in the comment down below. And if it gets a lot of likes, it's gonna be featured in the next Let's Argue video. Also, make sure to keep that hot take short, please. Without further ado, let's head into the hot takes of today. Coming in first by XX Dashing Requiem XX. And he's saying Ares was the best antagonist. In the series, I just love the dynamic he has with Kratos, how satisfying Ares' death was, and it leading to my second favorite ending in the whole series with Kratos becoming the god of war. Now, I love Zeus more than anyone in the world for some reason, especially in recent years, but this take is kinda interesting and I might leave it to you guys to decide. I mean, obviously, I'm not giving an opinion because I have a bias towards Zeus, so for me, I don't agree. Like, just come on, look at Zeus and his lightning and his swagger. But yeah, you guys tell me what you guys think about Ares. Is he the best antagonist? Is Zeus better? I don't know. Anyways, our next hot take by... <sighs> the Midgard Chronicler. Anyways, he's saying, I don't want Mjolnir as a usable weapon. It'll just be another Leviathan, but worse, you can't pin or freeze the enemies. Now, listen guys, even for how cool Mjolnir is... Jonathan? It still operates the same as the Leviathan Axe. I mean, calling it back and throwing it really, what's the difference? What I actually want is for the power of Mjolnir to be somehow absorbed by the Leviathan Axe, so that you can summon thunder and all the good stuff Mjolnir has. Jonathan? Otherwise, why would you use it in place of Leviathan? I mean, look at the handle, it's too short. It, it will look like Kratos is punching the enemy instead of hitting him with a hammer. Overall, I want Tragnarok to do something. Maybe something like giving the axe two modes. Like an axe mode and thunder mode. I don't know, fanfiction 101. Next hot take by i7dhk who wrote a paragraph. Please, for the third time before I heat up and blow up the universe. Keep those hot takes short. I chose this in the video because it got a lot of upvotes. And I'm not gonna be going through all the takes, only the first three. His first take, he's saying, the Golden Fleece in God of War 3 is overpowered. I mean, look at the Golden Fleece in God of War 2, it was more balanced than 3. And I mean, yes, it is overpowered, but why not? It's fast and effective and isn't that what you want in your high speed God of War game that is God of War 3? I agree it is OP but that doesn't make it bad. God of War 2 was slow because the game generally was slower than God of War 3 so yeah. His next take I agree 100% with. He says God of War 1 and 2 has the best level design in the series and he's absolutely right. Especially God of War 2. It's mad. I agree 100%. Next take he's saying God of War Ascension is the best in the series when it comes to enemy variety. I mean just look at the Medusa and Cerberus then compared to the previous games in the series. What an upgrade. I do not agree in the slightest. Maybe for the Cerberus and how he got stronger does make him fun but the Gorgons? Really? It takes an hour for the QTE to finish. You can't launch them and they have a lot of health for some reason and it's a problem with nearly all the enemies they for some reason all take a long qte time look at the juggernaut i love the design and attacks it does but if it grabs you it takes an hour to get out their finishing qte takes an hour as well why though so i do not agree i mean there are enemies in this game that are infinite fun type and challenging and then you fight these electric sirens and you go why are you the way that you are Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. They don't even belong to this game, and don't even get me started with that challenge of what's his fuck. God of War 3 has the best enemy variety, although it lacks legionnaires, but it's fine, whatever. Our next hot take by MickeyBath58. He's saying, can I be in your next hot take, and yeah, you get to be in my hot take video. He's saying the added changes to Ascension's combat was actually a great idea and made interactions interesting, but was ruined by how poorly the enemies were designed. I actually agree. They just didn't have handle it to the fullest thanks to the shitty multiplayer, some questionable bad enemies, and maybe for some people 4 elements of blades were a turn off. Even though we have the amazing world weapons, maybe they could have helped with some buffing to them. I love the skill requirement in God of War Ascension, and y'all just wait for the retrospectives that I'm planning for the old games. I have said before that God of War Ascension is what Doom Eternal was to the Doom franchise. They just didn't handle it well. So yeah, I totally agree. Next hot take by Jimbot, and he's saying the medicine ahead in God of War 1 and 2 is underrated. I have heard many people hate using it, meanwhile they do not realize how useful this magic attack is, especially in the hardest difficulty. Also I love your content. Thank you for loving my content, I'm pretty sure my content 
loves you too. Now about your hot take, I personally hate it so much because it's not fun. It disrupts the combat flow of the game, otherwise I know how useful it is. I know how you can freeze enemies and smash them with the barbarian hammer in God of War 2. I know how useful it is and all that stuff, but it's just not fun. Could be optimal for most spots, but just not fun, for me at least. Anyways, our next hot take by Kozman Dobre. God of War 3 has a good story and the perfect ending to the Greek era. I saw many people criticizing the story, especially Pandora and the Power of Hope, but to me, I love how these elements were incorporated into the story. I think it made narrative and thematic sense when looking back at the trilogy and the spin-offs as a whole. Now, the God of War 3 story have never really struck me as bad for a while until I got into YouTubing and talked to some more YouTubing friends and realized how kinda poor it is. And the problem is not the power of hope. I think I've heard before how the power of hope is actually the strongest weapon in Greek myths. The problem is the main villain of the game. Kratos. The game does spin it on you making you play as the villain destroying the world. That aspect is good, but redeeming that villain is what I have problems with. I mean, don't you think Kratos turning soft and trying to change after killing everyone was kinda too late and forced? Like where did this come from, this whole Pandora saving shit? Why did you raise the labyrinth then? You could say it was an act of peer pressure after Athena told him this, but still. Pandora's box? Again? Him turning to a hero at the very end? Man brutally killed Daedalus moments before reaching Pandora. I don't know man, you guys tell me what you think in the comments, I'm, I'm getting too old for this shit. Our next hot take by Alex and he's saying, Chris Judge did not deserve to voice Kratos in God of War 4. The entire story is about reflecting on the Greek era games and Kratos making sure Atreus doesn't end up like that. TC Carson was robbed of several emotional moments. He was the one that needed to voice Kratos. It's slightly harder to connect with Kratos in 4 because he's not voiced by the same guy. Okay, first of all, Christopher Judge did not deserve it. It's kinda harsh. Slow it down. But I get the Spartan rage that this guy had. I have discussed the whole TC Carson shtick that happened with Sony in this video that you're seeing on the screen. I'm 110% sure it was a business hate boner towards the man. They didn't even tell him they're making another game. I mean, how how much more disrespectful can you be? Didn't even bring him back for a flashback while they did bring back Zeus and Athena's VAs. Super disrespectful, I know. But I do not agree with the latter part of your argument. First game or if it's the first God of War game you play even without playing the Greek games, you can connect perfectly with Kratos. Chill. Next hot take by Raiden. The Blades of Chaos design look dull whenever they aren't being used. In combat, they do look cool though. I do not agree in this Name one more weapon on the back of any protagonist from any game from any franchise looking this cool. Especially when we're talking God of War 2 or 3 because in those games the blades are big and thick and you can see how big and beautiful they are from behind. Disagree, unagree. Next hot take by Arlen Touch Too Many? Why? What? He's saying the Blade of Artemis from God of War 1 is heavily underrated and could be the best secondary weapon of the franchise, aside from maybe the Nemean Cestus or Spear of Destiny. That's pretty interesting, I mean it's kinda underrated, yes, it's a very good weapon if you know how to use it, but the problem was that God of War 1 was too hard. So people get acquainted with the blades from the start, and when they get to Artemis Blade, they might not get into the full time job that is learning this weapon, so. I mean it is pretty good, but as I said, it just, you have to commit to learning this weapon while you spend nearly half the game playing with the blades where they're tons better. Anyways, our last hot take of today's video by Jacob Furby. He's saying the fact that some version of the vengeful Spartan did not appear in God of War 4 is disappointing. There are several videos of people putting it over the scene where Kratos picks up the blades and it makes me get goosebumps from the sheer amount of euphoria. I kinda agree to some extent but also do see where the developers are coming from. They tried to make this game as far away as possible from the Greek games. Not a single enemy referencing the Greek games and certainly not a single melody alluding to the Greek melodies. But that does contradict itself when you look at it in hindsight. I guess they should have played the vengeful Spartan when Kratos gets the blades back. You know, Greek music for Greek weapons, right? But no! They missed! Fuck! I know you're trying to diverge as much as you want from the Greek games, but if you did that much and if you got the blades that were Greek themed, why not a Greek music? Huh? Anyways, this is where we make it to the end of the video, boys. Thanks a lot. Thanks a ton. Thanks a 
Athena for all this. 10,000 subscribers and we're even still rising. You guys deserve all the love in the world. Leave your opinion on the hot takes of today and also make sure to leave your hot take. Make sure to leave, make it short and say a lot by not saying a lot, I guess. I don't know. And if it gets the most upvotes, of course, it's going to be featured in the next hot take video. However, it has been your Extreme Gamer Zesty. Peace.